Today we find that most of the atheists, they are atheists because they think that science and technology has advanced and they feel that everything has come by nature. So we have to talk to them on the subject which they think they are knowledgeable about. First thing that I will ask the atheist is that if an object is brought in front of you, who no one in the world has seen, it's brought in front of you for the first time. And if I ask the question that who will be the first person who will be able to tell you the mechanism of this object who no one in the world has seen, who will be? He will tell you yeah. that it is the creator. Or he may tell producer, he may say manufacturer, yes. he may say inventor, whatever he says, just keep it in the back of the mind. The first person who will be able to tell you the mechanism of an object who no one in the world has seen before is the creator, the producer, the inventor, the manufacturer. Yes, then you ask the next question that how did our universe come into existence? So the atheist will tell you that it was in 1973 that the group, a couple of scientists described how did our universe come into existence. And they told us that our universe was one primary nebula. Then there was a secondary separation, a big bang, which gave rise to galaxies, gave rise to stars, gave rise to sun, moon, and the earth on which we live. This, I asked them, when did they discover, so he will say in 1970s, where a couple of scientists got the Nobel Prize. So I will tell him what you're talking about, which you came to know hardly 50 years back, 40 to 50 years back, mm -hmm. is already mentioned in my Quran 14 years ago. Yes. Allah says in the, <laughs> it is mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Anbiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30. Awalam yirillazina kafiru. Do not the unbelievers see. Anna samawati wal arda. Kaan sarat kam That the heavens and the earth were joined together and we clove them asunder. So what you're talking about, the Big Bang is already mentioned in the Quran 14 years ago. Who could have mentioned that? So he will tell you, maybe it's a fluke. I said, don't worry. Maybe it's a fluke. Possible. Don't argue. I'll answer this question. That what is the shape of the earth? So, he, so the atheist will tell me that previously people thought that the earth was flat and they were afraid to venture too far lest they would fall over. Mm -hmm. The first person who discovered that the earth was spherical was Sir Bernard Palissy in 1577 when he sailed around the earth. So I will tell him, oh, you came to know the earth is spherical in 1577? He said, yes, hardly, hardly about 450 years back. Okay. I will tell him what you're talking about, the spherical shape of the earth is already mentioned in the Quran 1400 years ago in Surah Naziat, chapter number 79, verse number 30, where it's mentioned, wal ard baad azali ka daha. And thereafter, we have made the earth X-shaped. Daha is an Arabic word. One of its meaning is an expanse. The mm -hmm. other meaning is derived from the Arabic word duya, which means an egg. Mm -hmm. and, and we know today that the world is not completely round like a ball. It is flattened from the pole. Yes. It is geospherical in shape. And daha doesn't mean a normal egg. It specifically refers to an egg of an ostrich. It also means a place where the ostrich lays the egg. And if you look at the shape of the egg of an ostrich, it is geospherical in shape. Imagine what you came to know 450 years back is already mentioned in the Quran, 1400 years ago, that the earth is geospherical. Who could have mentioned this? So the atheist will tell you, or oh, maybe your prophet was an intelligent man. Don't argue, continue. I'll ask him the next question. That the light of the moon, is it its own light or reflected light? It is will tell you that previously we thought that the light of the moon is its own light. Recently we came to know that the light of the moon is not its own light, but it's a reflected light. Yes. I will tell him, Quran mentioned 14 years ago. Wow. In Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 61, yes. that blessed is he who has placed the constellation in the sky and placed the heron sun having light of its own and moon having borrowed light. The Arabic word for sun in the Quran is shams, and it's always described as siraj, wahaj, or diya, meaning a torch, a blazing lamp, or a shining glory. The moon, the Arabic word in the Quran is kamar. It's always described as munir or nur, meaning borrowed light or a reflection of light. Yes. Imagine the Quran says, 
the light of the moon is borrowed light or a reflection of light, which oh. we came to recently. Who could have mentioned this in the Quran 1400 years ago that the light of the moon is not its own light, but it's a borrowed or reflected light? Subhanallah. It just will be silent. Don't wait. Ask him the next question. When I was in school, I passed my school in 1982 and I learned that the sun was stationary. Though it revolved, it did not rotate about its own axis. They just will say, if that's what machine you Quran said, no, no, this I learned in my school. But hmm. in the Quran, it says in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 33, it says, hmm. It's Allah who has created the night and the day. Hmm. Sun and the moon. Each one traveling in orbit with its own motion. The Quran says the sun and the moon, besides revolving, they also rotate about its own axis. The Arabic word yasbuhun describes the moving of a, uh, describes the motion of a moving body. If I say a man is doing yasbuhun on the floor, it will not mean he's rolling, it will mean he's walking or running. Yeah. If I use it for a person in the water, it will not mean he's floating, it will mean he's swimming. Right. Similarly, when the Quran says for a celestial body in the heaven, in the sky, it doesn't mean it is flying, it means it's rotating about its own axis. Allah. Now, after science has advanced, we have come to know that the sun, besides revolving, also rotates about its own axis. And if we have an equipment of the sun, <laughs> if we have equipment, we can have the image of the sun on a tabletop. And we find that there are black spots in the sun. And it takes about 25 days for these black spots to complete one rotation, indicating that the sun takes about 25 days to complete one rotation. What I read in school that the sun does not rotate, but my Quran says the sun rotates, and now science is advanced, and it tells me the sun does rotate. Who could have mentioned this in the Quran? Wow. The atheist would be silent. Don't wait for his answer. You can ask him the next question. That today, science tells us that the sky that we have, that atmosphere that we have over the earth, is a protected ceiling, which Quran mentioned 14 years ago in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 31, that we have made the sky as a protected ceiling. Today we know, according to Edwin Hubble, that our universe is expanding. If the Quran says in Surah Dhariya, chapter 50 and verse 47, that we have created the vastness of space, that would be what is most Yuna, expanding universe. Yeah. Who could have mentioned this in the Quran? In the field of atomism, we first thought that atom is the smallest part of an element which cannot be divided. Today, science has advanced and says that the atom, though being the smallest part of element, it can yet be divided into protons and neutrons. And Quran says that in Surah Yunus chapter 30. Uh, uh, Quran says Surah Yunus chapter number 10 verse number 31. Oh. As well as Surah uh, uh, Luqman chapter number 31. It says that in Allah's record is propitious things greater and lesser than the atom. Oh. So Quran says, there are things lesser and greater, lesser and greater than the atom. The Arabic word used is zarra. In the field of hydrology, we learned about the present water cycle. When uh, Sir Bernard Palissy, in he was the first person who propounded the water cycle, which we learned in school. That how does the water evaporate? How does it form into clouds? It falls on as rain. This detail is given in the Quran about the water cycle in several places. It's mentioned in uh, uh, Luqman, chapter 31, verse number 29. In Surah Rum, chapter number 30, verse number 24. In Surah Rum, chapter number 30, verse number 48. In Surah Hijr, chapter 15, verse number 22. Wow. In, in Surah Hajj, chapter 22, verse number 18. In Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 40. It's mentioned in Surah Rad, chapter number 13, verse number 17. It's mentioned in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 48 and 49. It's mentioned in Surah Fatir, chapter 35, verse number 9. In Surah Yasin, chapter 36, verse number 34. In Surah Qaf, chapter number 50, verse number 9. It's mentioned in Surah Ghashya, chapter number 59, verse number 6. It's mentioned in Surah Tariq, chapter number 86, verse number 5 to 7. Oh. In several places, the Quran speaks about the water cycle in great detail. Oh. Quran speaks about zoology. Quran speaks about the behavior of ants in Surah Namal chapter 27 verse 17 and 18. Quran speaks about the spider that the house is fragile in Surah Ankabut chapter 29 verse number 41. Quran speaks about the lifestyle of the bee 
in Surah Nahal chapter 16, verse 16 and 69. Uh, the Quran uh, speaks about embryology, how were the human beings created in various stages. In Surah Mu'minun chapter number 23, verse number 12 to 14, Quran speaks about genetics, that the man is responsible, the man fluid is responsible for the sex of the child. In Surah Najm, chapter number 53, verse 46, as well as Surah Insan, chapter number 75, verse number 37 to 39. Uh, the Quran speaks about medicine, about various aspects. Subhanallah. After, there are more than 6,000 verses in the glorious Quran, out of which more than a thousand speak about science. Allah. I would like to ask the atheist, who could have mentioned this in the Quran, which we came to know recently, something 50 years back, some 100 years back, some 200 years back, and Quran mentioned this 14 years ago. Allah. The only reply the atheist can give you is the creator, the producer, the sustainer, the manufacturer, the inventor, this creator, this producer, this inventor, yeah. we Muslims call as Allah. Uh -huh. So with the help of the Quran, I can prove the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one way. There are various other ways. For the complete answer, you can refer to my talk on does God exist?